Hello and welcome to another insightful episode on my channel. Hi, I'm Hayatunde Hajibola and today we are diving to the world of Excel to unravel the mysteries of VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. These functions are trailblazers in the landscape of data analysis and I'm here to guide you through them with ease. Whether you're a beginner or looking to brush up your skills, this tutorial is tailored just for you. If you're excited about boosting your Excel expertise, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Let's get started and master these powerful Excel tools together. The primary purpose of these two functions is to look up a value in a big data table and give you a corresponding value back that's sitting in the same row. Now, we need to keep in mind that the value you're looking up has to be in the leftmost column and the value that's been returned has to be in an adjacent column. The key word here is left. You can't look up a value on the right side and return a value on the left side. VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP work in the same way except that V is for vertical lookups and H is for horizontal lookups. So if your data table has column headers, you're going to need VLOOKUP. And if your data table has row headers, you're going to need HLOOKUP. Let's have a look at an example for H. For this demo, imagine you've been given a large data set and you've been told that these are the sales agents, the quantity they sold, the revenue they made, the price they charged, and their customers. What you would like to do is to create an overview agent report where you select the agents and you find the price and the customer from this table. As a first step, we are going to add a drop down. I'll be dropping a video soon on data validation. Subscribe to my channel to get notified. We are going to go to data, data validation, and instead of any value, select list. And the source is our agent. So press Ctrl Shift and a down arrow key. And now we get to select our agent from here. Now, for the agent we select, we would like to find the price. That's where our VLOOKUP formula comes in. The first argument in the VLOOKUP formula is the lookup value. What are we looking up? In this case, we are looking up the agent, which is in this cell here. Next comes the table array. You have to remember that this is the full table. So the full range where your lookup values and your answers are in, and it is one range. You're not supposed to select different ranges by holding your control down and going like this. But instead, you select the entire range, which in this case is from here to here. I am going to press Ctrl Shift down again. That's my range. And keep in mind that the key, the main thing is that this agent B is listed as part of the data on the first array in this range. It has to be on the left hand side. Even if I don't need quantity and revenue, I have to highlight them because they are in my way. They're in the way of me getting to the price and customer. So you always have to select the entire range, even if there's stuff in there that you don't need. Next is the column index number. And that basically means how much should it move? So it assumes that the first one is a one. I mean the column, it assumes the first column is the one, the second column is a two, three, four, and five. So basically, in which column is the answer that you want? Since we want the price here, and that makes it one, two, three, four. The fourth column, we have to put four in there. And this last argument is important to get right. If your lookup value is text and not a number, 
if you leave it empty, it defaults to true, which means that an exact match is not necessary. But it requires that your lookup column is sorted in ascending order. If it's not sorted in ascending order and you leave this argument empty, then you're probably going to receive an error. In our own case, we have it sorted as ascending, but generally, I don't want to be bothered to think, is this text, is this a number, is it sorted or not? So I always put false in here, meaning that this should be an exact match. I recommend that you generally put this on false as well. Okay, so let's check this. For agent B, the price here is 70.05, which is the same as what we have on the data set. Now, what about the customer? I can follow the same logic again. My lookup value is B. The table I'm looking up is here. And my customer should be included because it's what we are looking for. Which column is a customer? The last one, which makes it one, two, three, four, five. The fifth column and false is the last argument. Customer B for agent B, exactly as we have it here. And if we select on agent K, we have 35.76 as the price, which is what we have here. And then we also have customer K as the customer. I have a very simple dynamic report using VLOOKUP. You can also use VLOOKUP within formulas so they don't have to be used on their own alone, like this. For example, if I wanted to find a price here, and let's assume I didn't have the price in my source data, I actually need to calculate it. I could write a formula on this, and I could say, well, divide the revenue by the quantity. And to tell it which revenue to divide by what quantity, I will use the VLOOKUP formula, and say look up agent K in this area I want the revenue first so that's column number three one two three false as my last argument and divide this by the results for the VLOOKUP formula for quantity My quantity is sitting on column number two. And I put false as my last argument again. And that gives me my price. So agent K has a calculated price of 35.76, which is the same as what we have in the source data here. As you can see, VLOOKUP doesn't have to be used on its own, but can be used within other formulas. Using agent E as another reference point, Agent T has a calculated price here of 244.23, which is the same as what we have on our source data. And now, let me show you the H lookup version of this. So in case your original source data is not provided in this way, but instead in rows. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to move down here and I'm going to paste this as transpose. Okay, so in case you have your data provided to you in this way, which is less likely, but it's possible, and you want to do the same type of lookup and the same type of overview report, you will have to use the HLOOKUP function. So in the same manner, if you want to find the price of an agent, so maybe agent hen from this table, we are going to write HLOOKUP. So in the same way, if you have a sales agent, let me just copy this down. We're going to write new formulas. So in the same manner, if you want to find the price for agent E from this table, we are going to write HLOOKUP. The lookup value is this and her array table is this. Don't forget that what you're looking up here needs to be the first on your table array. The lookup value is this and her table array is this. Next is the row index number instead of the column index. So where is the price in here? One, 
two, three, four. It's the fourth row. And again, do false as your last argument. The same with customer. I can actually copy this and paste in here. Because this remains the same. That's what I'm looking up. My table is the same, but instead of four, what number do I need? Five, because you're trying to get the result for customer. So I'll change this to five. I have 244.23 and customer he for agent E. Agent E is right here. We have the same price as we have here and also the customer here. The customer as we have here. So I also use agent high as a point of reference. You'll see that my price is 335.63, which is the same as we have here on the source data and also customer high for agent high. Okay, instead of price, I wanted to find quantity. The only thing I need to change is my index number and quantity is number two. So I'll change this to two. So I get 48 for agent high right here. And that's the HLOOKUP function. To recap, one major limitation of the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP formulas is that they can't look to the left. So what if you wanted it the other way around? That instead of selecting the agent here, we were going to select a customer and get back the agent here. We wouldn't be able to use the classical VLOOKUP formula we are going to need to change the table by bringing the customer to the left-hand side because the value we are looking up always has to be in the left-hand corner. And that wraps up our journey through the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions in Excel. I am Hayotunde Ajibola and it has been a pleasure guiding you through those essential Excel tools. I hope you found this tutorial valuable and you are now confident in navigating through your data sets. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might find it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more amazing content on Excel and other tech tips. Your support means the world to me. If you have questions on a specific topic, drop your thoughts in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.